Good luck. All right, so this marks week 9090 of the Shogi Teaching Ladder. Um, so let's see. Do I have a preference for opening here? Um, yeah, so I think this is something I'm preparing for another opponent. Um, and the notion here is that even though I open the diagonal, that if my opponent chooses to close this, then I can uh, play right fourth file rook is the plan. If they don't close it, uh, things are okay. Um, it's super common for both players to open the bishop line. Um, yeah, this is fairly common too. This is called tempo loss bishop exchange. And for obvious reasons, the tempo is lost. So, what do I recall about bishop exchange theory? <laughs> oh, if only it were more than it is. Um, I'm still trying to decide... Um, so many options. Yeah, let's, I suppose, try to play something more traditional. I think, yeah, I think developing the rook is sensible. Um, Yeah, this is curious. So they've lost the tempo. This is as if we were playing normal bishop exchange lines, but just without that tempo. Um, I could drop here forking these pawns. And then they defend this pawn. I take here, they defend this, and then my bishop is awkward for the remainder of the game. That's one option. It's not the greatest option. Activating the rook is sensible. Yeah, I don't see any problem with this. I mean, yes, they can do the same tactic I was just talking about, but against me. Um, hmm. This also looks sensible. So this protects against their rook pawn advancing too far. Um, now I deliberate a little bit because I've moved this in advance and I'm wondering can I still castle this direction and have a reasonable shape? Um, Hmm. Yeah, it's hard to make use of this extra tempo. Okay, we're going to commit to static rook then. So, it's not exactly uh, where I'm most familiar, but this is a learning, uh, since this is a teaching ladder game, we both aim to learn something from playing it. Um, not totally sure what I'm going to learn from this, but that's why we play the games. I push this pawn, they can drop in my camp, so maybe I do this first. I 
I mentioned having some interest in playing a fourth file or right fourth file rook here. I think that's still playable. And seems sensible since what they're aiming to do is building a shape similar. Well, I, I mean, they put the pawn up, the silver up. If they bring these golds over, this is a shape similar to Yagra, but uh, without my knight being able to hit a bishop here, the knight would be hitting a silver instead. Um, Where did I lose a tempo? Oh, I lost my tempo moving this gold. That's what happened here. Um, so I think at this point, even though I spent a tempo anchoring this silver and that tempo seems to be mostly wasted um somehow because they've taken a tempo of securing their king we've kind of hit some parity here yeah to be able to push this pawn they have to play the silver forward and now i could push immediately and walk directly into a fourth file rook attack uh which might not be smart So, what's plan B? Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. Oh, but walking directly into that at least for one temple, they'll have to bring their gold over to defend against my bishop drop idea. Um, yeah, I think this is sensible. I have a plan. Um, so if they try to play a fourth right for file rook strategy, I might tuck my king into this corner here. And if they don't, I'll just attack. So we'll see how this goes. Let me check my overlay. Okay, got the badges in place. This is good. Okay, so yeah, in general, I intend to advance on the side of the board. Uh, okay, I thought that if they played this, they would have to take time to deal with um, my intended bishop drop. I forgot that um, they can't play the rook over and defend the bishop drop all in one move. Um, so, where this leaves us right now is that my king is aligned with the rook, and as much as I might want to do clever things, I probably need to spend one tempo defending before I do something tricky. Um, oh, we're kind of in the same boat. I could play right fourth foul rook as well, right here, right now. Um, interesting. I 
And by playing it right now, this would disincentivize a bishop drop there. But the bishop drop here is basically never good, as is my bishop drop here. It's basically never good. Um, yeah, let's get my king out of here. And away to safety. I had intended to um, play left Anaguma. And I could even leave this square open. Like, I don't have to move the silver back to build this castle. I just have to one, two, maybe even three over with this gold. But it's useful where it is right now to defend against perspective bishop drop ideas. All right, so my opponent copies, and now we're back in a symmetrical structure. Um... Why does it still feel like I'm down a tempo? Where's my other tempo here? If I put my rook where they put their rook, why am I... Oh, my king is advanced one further. That's why this is not perfectly symmetric. Okay. Um, this looks again fairly reasonable. Mm -hmm. That never becomes a target, right? I don't know. I guess what they're saying is it's time for me to attack, if I'm listening correctly. Um, I think this is the best I can manage here. Really? Okay. Hmm. Well, this simply walks into a fork. Uh, well, they could defend all the points that are attacked on the fork. So there's no rush just yet. But we're getting close. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that does walk into a fork. No, right, the knight controls this. Uh, I'm quite excited at the moment. Since I see them pushing, and I still don't know where my own attack lies. I'm trying to figure that out. Okay, so my rook is going to be more effective on a different square, but if I move it here, they drop a bishop that attacks this point. I can trap that bishop. Um, yes, yeah, so let's play right fourth foul rook and stop hesitating on that. My rook and gold defend each other. Anaguma's overrated. We don't have the time to build it. Um... Yes, I'm playing that same move myself. And my thought was I'm going to bring up my silver and bring up my knight. 
okay. Yeah, this closes a possible fork here. It's no longer possible. Um... Hmm. If I advance the knight, my position weakens. Anything I can do basically weakens my position. Hmm. Bishop exchange is difficult. Well, no, there is one thing I could do. Um, if I bring up the knight again, this forces some decisions, uh, but they just retreat, and my knight is prey. Okay, I guess I have to push on this edge and forsake Anaguma. And see what they can do with the tempo. Yeah, bringing my king into the castle lost a tempo. This weakens this point. Um, so if I drop a bishop now, if they defend that, I can attack the silver now. Mm. My bishop gets trapped. Uh, I don't know. My bishop's always getting trapped here. If I push there, my lance is loose. That's not smart. Hmm. Well, it's not safe if, as for whether it's smart. Of course it's smart. I'm attacking where their king is. How could that be bad? This is why you castle your king. So, yeah. Admittedly, pawn takes, knight takes, they could bring this silver out of this knight attack into the center to block this line. But then a bishop drop forks this pawn and that. And attacking this pawn would allow me to threaten the knight too. So it's just a cascade of attacks that's occurring here. They could retreat the king and just give up a pawn. Um, or they could fight me over this. I think they were imagining pawn takes, silver takes. But I'm imagining pawn takes, knight takes, and even if they do this bishop drop, I have this double check, and if the king takes, then I promote the rook. So that's probably worth the lance uh, to have such a strong attack. Well, then I could take their lance too, so. Yeah, it's at least worth the lance to have that. I wonder also... I mean, I keep mentioning this pawn, but... Okay, though the rook defends this, I don't want... I'm not super, super interested in that one. <laughs> because I can't collect it. threatens to escape with the bishop. Uh, I can seal off the escape. 
multiple different ways. Not sure what else this threatens. If I lift the rook to seal this, pawn takes silver or pawn takes knight takes. I still have no good way to attack my rook. Yeah. Wait. Is there no continuation? Well, no, they could attack the rook with a knight. So, rook up. Uh, pawn takes, knight takes, silver takes. Oh. If Rook takes, then I can go back afterward. And then they could drop a knight to attack my Rook. Um, hmm. The whole reason I kept the gold down here... Well, no. They could still use a gold general. Um... Gold up, pawn takes. Hmm. Okay, we have 60 seconds thinking time for every move. If I go up, they take here, knight takes. Yeah, there is a downside to, there's multiple downsides to moving this gold. Uh, floating the rook is dangerous too. But no, we have to take some risks. There's... No way to play without risk at all. That's not a risk. Moving this gold is not a risk I have to take. Oh, if I push, they can push here. It's fine. That's interesting. You don't have to, at all costs, collect this bishop. There are some costs where the bishop is just not worth collecting. So here the king is directly in my path. Even if they escape this way, it's just not worth it for them. Yeah, so now knight takes sets up a threat. threat for which they just don't have an easy counter. I'm mistaken. They do. Um, so silver takes instead, but then they drop a pawn, I take the silver, and then I've trapped their bishop. Um... No, that doesn't work either. I think this is the best I can do. There are still problems here, but what position has no problems? Not a real position. <laughs> real positions always have problems to deal with. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm not trapping their bishop. It looked like I was, but there's just not a clear path there. Well, if they did the pawn drop anyway. Here, this double check threat is enormous, uh, which is why I didn't want to exercise it first. 
I wanted to hold this in reserve. I mean, yeah, they can block the double check, but then... Um, no, I'm still... I'm winning a silver. I'm not winning a bishop. That's the difference. If I take here directly... Yeah, this is stupid, so I should just take here this way. At this point, I have this double check threat. They have to block or move the king out of the way. Um... Yeah, they could block with this silver, sure. And they do. And that's fine. Um, I underestimated this, of course. I thought I had something amazing here. I might have something that's okay, but nothing amazing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. This is just difficult to figure out. One thing that I do recognize, however... Uh, oh. Well, it's fine. Um, it's not great. <sighs> yeah, the tactics are hard. Um... So if they drop another silver here, I don't know what I'm going to do. I could concede this knight in order to collect the bishop, but this gets more difficult after I've given them a knight. Um, while the silver is here, it's not possible to drop a pawn here, but that's not so... <laughs> um, they're not, they don't need to be in any hurry to collect my knight. I guess what I'm saying indirectly is that I played the move order wrong. That knight takes before silver takes is probably the way to go. But um, I thought I saw tactics that probably just aren't correct. Yeah, this with a silver in between, I'd be able to move the silver freely. Um, this way, I don't have freedom. My lack of freedom means a lot here. Um, so we're going to see silver drop, rook retreats, pawn drop, rook moves somewhere else again, maybe attack the bishop directly. I don't know. Um, and while I've succeeded in trapping the bishop, my own rook is trapped. And it's going to take a long time to untrap it. Oh, they played this first. To guarantee that my rook doesn't escape. Sanjubyo. Hmm. What a complicated position. Uh, this will be fine. It's just a rook. <laughs> 
So, at the end of this, I'm getting a silver and exchanging my rook for a bishop. Because I couldn't find anything better. Also, they have an attack, which is probably the more troubling aspect of this. Um... I mean, I'm still looking like bishop drop. It's not so easy. I don't know. No, there's nowhere to escape the rook. That's fine. So we have two bishops in hand. They have a rook. I can take this silver here. I probably should take it. Um, I could check here first. I don't see a difference, but maybe there is one. If I check the king moves toward the corner, that doesn't do any good for me. Could hit the rook, but then they just take my silver, or they take here. Yeah, this is a mess. Because if they take my knight, then they could push this pawn. Oh, really? That's curious. I mean, sure, the rook can promote here. Probably. But I don't know that that makes this rook drop good. I've seen better rook drops. Um, strange. Rather than trying to prevent this... Oh, shit. Uh... <laughs> That's complicated. Yeah. Um, so they can promote. I can fork these pieces immediately after this promotion. But... That's not how you play Shogi. Would have made more sense for me to try to stop this promotion. Although I saw a lot of tactics that I was not liking. Um, bird in the hand was worth it here. Instead of two birds in the bush. Alright. So now we have to fight the hard way where they get to take two of our generals, and we get to take a rook. Or they get to take two of my generals, I get to take their rook. If they don't agree to that exchange, uh, they promote their rook, and I get to capture a token. Or they could use this token to protect their rook, and we just exchange bishop for rook, and I could use a rook here. Their back rank is wide open, so I could use a rook, but um, giving up two generals is not a great feeling, or does not produce a great feeling. Okay, so they choose this path where I get to take their promoted pawn and completely shut down their attack, it seems. Um, Like, I'm sitting really pretty here. I guess if they take here, maybe it's not so obvious that I'm so 
Oh, yeah, no, I actually don't want to let the rook out. I've protected this lance already. I don't need to protect it a second time. So, yeah, we're going to make it difficult for this. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, sure, there are tactics in this position that kind of sort of justify that. Um, not really. Hmm. Sanjubio. Strange. Yonjubio. That's fine. You can have my knight. I've got two clips. I've got a silver protecting a gold and a silver protecting a gold. That's a strong shape. Uh, well, do I want a silver? I could do this fork and collect a silver. I don't think that's my best move. It looks strong, but I think better is this fork. Well, it doesn't win anything. Yeah, this is an amazing fork. It hits this lance, this knight, and this knight. So, uh, that must be best. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they put their own knight in a bind here. Um, they do have a bishop. Hmm. Sanjubio. I'm trying to judge how solid my king is. Okay, let's take a night. This will be fine. It's a night immediately allows me to fork these two gold generals. So this blocks their pawn. The counter here seems quite obvious. Step out of the attack, render both knights ineffective. Uh, actually, I could do that regardless of which way the silver goes, but toward the center I also block the diagonal. So, this seems obvious. <laughs> and now I've got a knight and a bishop. If that weren't enough, I could collect another lance. If that weren't enough, I could still probably drop a pawn in front of the king and manage something here. Um, So, yeah, we've consolidated. Actually, this fork, giving them another knight for a gold. Sure, it erodes the castle. Um, but uh, it's better here just to collect things, I think. Since the positions slow down so much.
They just, without using their bishop, they don't have an attack, and I'm not finding a good bishop drop for them. Maybe they have one, I just don't see it. But yeah, this blocks this pawn. And earlier I was considering bringing the silver up. My chief concern was that they'd activate their rook by pushing this pawn. Okay, this protects against a knight drop. Yeah, let's proceed the simple way here. We can find a way to use this lance. One example would be now we have this nice line with the silver and the king directly lined up. So, yeah, a lance could be useful there. They don't have any pawns. They could sacrifice a knight for a pawn. They could sacrifice a silver for a pawn, but um, maybe they're looking at bishop takes silver. I didn't consider this. If I recapture and then they drop the silver in my face, I can run away. I don't have to take it. And I don't know what happens next. But yeah, I thought my king was really secure here. Had I spent a tempo defending again, um, they could have played this gold back. No, they can't, because that would not have trapped the dragon. I thought they would have something to trap the dragon, but I'm not seeing anything. So, yeah, this taking the lance was premature. The sacrifice probably doesn't win, but might still be the best thing to do. Yeah, because what else can they do? Um, I can take this... I should take this, because otherwise I'm under a severe attack. There's not going to be a better move for me. Um, now, if they drop this silver here, like I mentioned, I can run away. And should run away. Um, which way do I run? Normally I'd say toward the corner. Um... Especially because they have a rook here. Hmm. Yeah, this is the safest direction to run. Yesterday we had quite the harrowing experience. Uh, playing against Jin, and uh, I think at one point he did have my king completely surrounded, but I checkmated him first. That was a really lucky uh, game I had, but we can't rely on being lucky every game. All right, so they retreat and do not promote. Um, I can't defend forever. Maybe I can. It's still not a good idea. But, um... Hmm. There's not a safe way out of this. They have two knights attacking me. Um... I'm not going to find a better square for my knight, ever, so let's play it here. Rather than try to in defend indefinitely, 
Let's build an attack. Maybe spending one more tempo defending might have been best. I could have put a lance back here to protect this file. Maybe that would have been better. Um, but if I play actively, I should be okay here. No, actually, I have to attack, because, like, yeah. Oh, well, they promoted it. They didn't need to promote here. Um, I think their attack is scarier if they don't promote. This way... Uh, oh, I could line up the lance with that now, <laughs> like I was just saying. Um, that's a defensive idea. Hmm. So a lance is useful in this context, because if they get a lance and drop it on my head, I don't immediately die for it. I don't feel like exchanging my knight just yet. Maybe I had a mate in the corner. I'm not seeing it. But Sanjubio. knight takes gold, king takes bishop drop, king over. No, I don't have a mate there. Yonjubio. So this is fine. In some critical position I'll need to Yonjubio. take a piece, but we're not there yet. Oh, I could take pawn pawn knight. To try to secure my king. Okay, yeah, this is the reaction I was hoping for. Is that they step away. Because now it's harder for them to attack. Okay. We'll give another knight in this occasion. I was considering, do I chase this knight with my pawn? It's just not worth it. So, um... Sanjubyo. It's true I can't avoid exchanges forever, but if the king takes this and if I take the knight, my knight can fork there. So they actually didn't take. I'm surprised. Um. Yeah, that's really odd. Unless the king somehow escapes in one piece, but... How can that happen? It can happen if I don't surround the king. Um, no, we have this king surrounded. Oh, uh, wait, they can drop a pawn here. 
Okay, this is not instantly winning. Yeah, they have to drop the pawn. They can and must. This prevents them from dropping other pieces later, but um, yeah, they could do that. Okay, there's an obvious idea. Uh, so gold drop right there is the next threat. Um, of course, they'll do something about it. But if their solution is to run, I have this bishop drop over here. Oh, they can keep running. Hmm. Strange. So I can actually take this knight Maybe I need a knight later. Uh, wait a second. Yeah, if I check if the king keeps running, I can take there and then gold drop here, right? That looks strong. I think I can take this knight for free. So... I want to surround the king. If I check, king runs. Oh, it's promoted here. Silly me. Pieces promote in this game. So if I check, king up. Check. They could block with their piece that they collected. Um, it's probably best, right? Hmm. So I'm actually encouraging the king to run up. Which does complicate things, but I think I prevail even in the complications. Otherwise, I should have preferred to gold drop in front, but I think I'm better after these complications. Um. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I just take this silver here. And they run out of checks almost immediately. That was what I saw. Wait, did I have it? No, they had this covered. This is a silver covering that square. But yeah, I've got two bishops uh, powerfully looking down this board. And my knight covers my king's head, uh, so I have to take here. Should take here. My king is safe here. Thanks for the game. Alright, so in a teaching ladder, uh, we aim to learn from our games. 
part of that involves post-game analysis and discussion. So, uh, yeah, that was exciting. Let me zoom in once. Um, and I guess I ask, are we ready for analysis? Ah, I'm now the host for analysis mode. Cool. Uh, sure, we could start at the beginning. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I am curious what they think about it. Um, yep, GG. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. So we both play this really symmetric uh, shape. Um, yeah. So I think we played it, both of us played it fine. I'm not really sure like what exactly transpired here. Although, yeah, I did stop them from pushing this pawn forward and then um, they immediately transition to fourth foul rook here. So, um, hmm. yeah, I, uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, This is too much. So, yeah, I'm curious um, how it is that they play this. Oh, they actually prefer my king on 2 2 uh, due to the rook. Hmm. Oh, that's right. That's, uh, that explains it. Um, but my rook's over here right now. Hmm. Yes, after I move the rook. Uh, yeah. So I wasn't off my rocker then. I wonder, should I just do this? This would uh, alleviate pressure that built up later in the game. Um, yeah, I think people play that. Anyway, I started to try to build an attack. Uh, they attacked quicker. Uh, yeah, then I played that slow move on the edge, and then we break here. Um, so this would suggest, um, yeah, maybe don't break there. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is very similar to uh, something that happened on the last Shogi Harbor lecture, actually. Uh, yeah, so you try to play this, but... Um, your king needs to be somewhere safer if you're going to play something like that. Otherwise, uh, I always have a check. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, they were playing quickly, and I get you can use your time however you like to, but um, this really helped a lot. So, yeah, 
uh, having the king exposed there was just kind of dangerous. Um, uh, I couldn't read everything, so I wonder. There's so many um, different ways that I would choose to win material here and get myself in trouble. Um, Rook 6 4 was the poison I chose. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, like, with the king exposed like this, um, it's hard to find something better. I mean, alternatively, I guess there's this, maybe? But I don't think so. Um, uh, oh. Uh, wait, didn't I have something here? This is what I've been thinking about. This looks difficult for Gota. Um, I'm not sure how they deal with everything. Uh, well, that's fun too. Yeah, I take here. Sure, I take a rook for free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh I could be misreading stuff in this analysis. I'm trying my best. It's not easy. Um, but this does look challenging. Um, oh, in another situation. Yeah, feel free to show. Um, just because I'm the high rated player doesn't mean I should be showing stuff. In fact, I don't know what the questions are, so yeah. It helps to have uh, the player who lost the game ask the questions. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Oh, wow. Maybe I can do that here. It works. That pawn dropped works in many positions. Does it work here? Maybe. Yeah, this is cool. Since my king is... Hmm. Wait, so... That's tricky. Um... Hmm. What can I do in response to this? It's not so easy for me to respond, is it? Um, yeah, I guess I have to move here. Oh, but they can't increase the pressure on this corner of the board anymore, can they? Uh, maybe something like th Oh, that's fine, too. Uh, yeah. Um... <laughs> It's amazing that I don't have a tactic here yet. So, where's my tactic? Where's my awesome tactic? I don't know. It's in another castle. <laughs> um... Mm 
Hmm. Yeah, as the more I look at this, I'm not really seeing a whole lot here. Um, I wonder, so suppose I back up here instead? Is it still the same deal? Um, so maybe this? Yeah. It's kind of hard to believe that this works, but uh, it's, I don't know what else could happen. Let's take that. So we stopped this pawn from promoting, but also tremendously weakened my castle. Uh, I don't see a tactic right away. Interesting. Yeah, I guess we take here. And defend uh, the king's head. I mean, I could drop a knight to defend it, but this looks adequate. And I could use the knight to attack later. Um... And then yeah, try to make use of the pieces. Oh, interesting. It's such a violent style. Very cool. Um, yeah, no, that's actually, uh, that's a good way to break in. Um, wait, this doesn't break in though, does it? Yeah. I th for a second, I had the same illusion that, wait, this actually does break through. But no, material's balanced, so I'm able to withstand this attack just barely. Okay, this is another line. Oh, right, uh, save the bishop. Um, and how do I proceed here? I guess continue attacking it. Maybe not. Maybe that's a huge overplay. Um... So, yeah, I don't, I just don't see how it, this continues. Oh, right. Yeah, so the king is always a target. Things are always going to lead back to it, aren't they? Um, So their king is somewhat more vulnerable than mine is. Possibly my silver drop was not the greatest move there, but um, yeah, actually my silver drop is doing nothing out here. Um, why did I do that? Maybe I have something more compelling here. Like, I don't know, I didn't want to do this, but maybe it's fine. Yeah. Um, somehow I thought this is fine. Is it not fine? So their rook doesn't immediately promote here. Uh, so we're going to chase the rook a bit. Oh, I guess they could sack the token to promote the rook. No, I'm not. I don't have to let it through. 
Um, Hmm. Oh, silly me. So that's another sample variation. So pawn takes pawn. While it looks playable, it seems now like an overplay. Uh, yeah. So I was correct to not do that during the game. Um, but yeah, it seems confusing to me how best to defend all this. Um, oh, that's a bishop exchange to Suji to be aware of. Yeah, once the king is in that castle. Yeah, there's no obvious targets here. Eventually I'm going to hit the king somehow, I just don't see how, but um, I have to prevail. So their attack... Hey, welcome. Uh, yeah. It's uh, the castle I ended up here with was similar to Half Yaga. So that's pretty cool. Um, hmm. Our Half Fortress, for those of us in English. Um... Is there a button for, like, are there more questions? Uh, so, yeah, there's not anything about more questions here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what else to ask. It just seems like uh, his attack run, ran out, and then I was able to mate him. And so, study can take a player quite far. And then beyond the study, they have to come up with a lot of ideas during the game, too. Yeah. Uh, all the players that have the Squadamalan flag uh, tend to attack quite aggressively. Cool. Yeah, see you around. Uh, cool. Yeah, I think I've played him before. But it's the attacking style that um, everyone with that flag tends to play aggressively. Uh, so it leads to a lot of exciting games in the teaching ladder and in the World Shogi League. Um, yeah, I was fortunate to, that their attack ran out. Maybe my counterattack wasn't the most convincing. I do like that I withheld knight takes gold for a move. Uh, and then they stepped away and believed me. But, like, how do they proceed here? I don't think they do. Um, wait, how did this get here? Oh, they moved this knight forward, which blocked their silver. And based on that, I said, well, okay. Your silver can't move anywhere. So what's your next move? That's my next question here. And then they just moved away from my castle and my attack prevails. But here there's not a lot of choose to select from. But some kind of defensive move might have been in order. But I don't think there is a good defensive move here. Um, I think they're just hosed. But yeah, maybe something like this, if they're lucky, might hold for a bit longer. Um, 
Oh, he lost him in last week's teaching ladder. Push the first file pawn. Oh, there's an interesting thought. Uh, and then redrop it on one three. Uh, right. Yeah, so this might force my hand. Um, yeah, that's a aggressive attacking move here. Uh, against this, how can I play? Hmm. Is this more aggressive? Um, just based on the observation that if this gold advances, this is checkmate. Uh, and if this gold retreats, I can take it um, because this is checkmate. But yeah, against many players, this might be a very good try because, say, hypothetically, I don't do that. If I take here, they're threatening this redrop, and this would give them another knight in hand. Um, in addition to sealing my king into the corner. Uh, it's a good try. It might not be perfect <laughs> in this case because they're out of pieces, um, but it's a reasonable attempt. Whether or not they do that before or after this seems, eh, whatever. Uh, actually, wait, no. They take here. That's how they get a piece. I keep forgetting, like, you can attack with pieces that you're about to get. That's going to have to be a pattern I eventually figure out. Um, but yeah, this forces me to make some decisions. So it's a good idea. Um, yeah, it's the way this proceeded. I actually took here, but we were just saying a second ago, what about this? So what about this? <laughs> uh, they have a pawn. That doesn't change anything. Okay. So I'll cut myself a little slack for... I saw the pawn during the game. But... Um, it actually doesn't change anything is the conclusion, so I should have looked at this, because there's checkmate everywhere. Um, so what if this moves sideways instead so I can't take it? Um, hmm. Maybe this isn't so obvious. Wait, no, no, that's not me. Uh, just wanting something to be made doesn't make it checkmate. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe what I played was okay. Bishop 7 9. It's a tempting move. King goes forward. Do I take the gold here? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, so if the king goes up, we have a gold drop here. King takes, the, then there's mate there, either with the knight or the gold that we just captured. So, yeah, this uh, bishop next to bishop pattern uh, mates in a constellation where uh, even if I don't have the knight, this would tend to mate. Even if there's a lance in the corner, there's still a mate. Even if the king escapes, often there's a mate in front, as long as the king can't continue escaping. So, yeah, this bishop-bishop pattern is something. I mean, to be able to do this, you have to be able to drop the bishop in the first place. So it's really like rook and bishop and bishop uh, can mate without assistance. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, again, that's based on the observation that you can take this and then immediately use it. Um, but also on the observation that the king just has nowhere to go. So yes, this is exactly right. That defeats this sideways moving gold. So 
yeah, since all of these moves are defeated, um, well, even trying to run the king doesn't work here, so the best defensive try is something like this. Um, which, yeah, if this is your defensive move, then uh, there was no reason for me to exchange the knight here, is the conclusion. Unless somehow the knight exchange forces mate faster. But even if it does, it's not that clean or clear what's going on. So uh, in this case, however, there is a concrete continuation. We check here. Uh, if they advance, we have bishop drop mate. So they have to block with one of these two pieces. Um, yeah, they want to keep the gold covering this square. And we say, no, the gold can't actually cover that square. Wait. No, I'm sorry, this was not a contact. This is a contact check they can't interpose upon. So, yeah, this repeat, repeat. They try to keep the gold protecting that square. And there, that's made. There's probably something easier, too, but this works. Um, so, yeah. Uh... That's to say that my knight takes gold was not a good move. Um, unless this forces mate. And I'm not convinced this is forced. I think they could take here. Um, sure, I probably have mates here everywhere, but uh, running away from the knight didn't save them. So you have to try something else. Oh, this doesn't work either. Okay. Yeah. So I could see why they were running away now. Um, at the time I thought it was strange, but it actually was kind of complicated. So that either meant that I didn't play this right, or this is a resourceful try by them, or both. Could be both. Um, yeah, it did, I don't think... Yeah, in the game I didn't play Bishop Takes Silver, I considered it, but anyway... We're getting into the weeds of an endgame here, and the general picture is that their attack is run out, and the reason the attack is run out, well, it's because I got this check in much earlier. Um, so yeah, they had to pick a path here, having dropped this rook. They dropped the rook because that's the right thing to do, but at this point... Um, well, yeah, so I could have considered this, too, during the game. I was thinking about it, and I was in Byoyami. That's my excuse. But yeah, now I have a bishop pair, and I can collect this pawn. I actually don't need to collect it. I was thinking I needed to take it, but I don't. I was trying to find a way to trap this dragon, or exchange it for something, but... I don't have that. Had this edge pawn been up one further square, this would be a fork, but it's not, so there is no fork there. Uh, dragon's threatening to take this pawn. Hmm. My silver could take here and protect the pawn, but like my position's coming apart here. I did the right thing during the game, didn't I? So, yeah, there were a couple things I could have done. Um... One would be... Oh, I can't pawn drop. That would be silly. This looks really silly to me. Because um, if they take here... Okay, sure. I could do something like that. But it's a similar conclusion to the line I just rejected. Yeah, I wanted to consolidate my position a bit. Prevent this rook slash dragon from being able to enter. Um, so, like, this would run into this pawn advance. Well, no, it doesn't. It does not. This would actually run into something like this, hitting the lance and the gold. And at this point, I could do something like that. So, um, and they, they come out over here. And again, I don't like this line. So, against what I played in the game, um, yeah, this might have been the most reasonable try. 
They could still escape, but it's going to cost them this token. But no, that's the same conclusion I kept rejecting over here, so I didn't want to see that. But, um, yeah, this way, they're, either way, they're in the driver's seat here. Um, yeah, I guess somehow I just tricked them accidentally. Because this is just as, the only reason this might not be as strong, or I'm sorry, yeah, as what I actually played, is that this also tries to defend against this incoming rook. So, actually what I played here was fine. This pawn promotion, while it looks cool, uh, and forces me to defend, um, this might not have been the way to go. Yeah, I think they should have just promoted the dragon and tried to break up my attack before it consumes their king. Um... Why don't we bring both silvers back? Sorry, I missed which point in the analysis we were talking about there. Maybe you're talking about what I was just referring to here. How they could try to break things up this way. Um, and maybe something like this is what you're talking about. I don't know. Uh... So this one, I guess I didn't like this variation. Um, I guess you're asking, why don't I just bring these back? Something like this, I guess. Maybe. That might make sense. Um... Oh, before. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sorry. I don't know if I'm like very... Oh, when the dragon goes away to 8-4. Okay. I'm trying to remember. 8-4 is over here. Um... Okay, so we're talking about something, not this one, but, um, yeah, oh, sorry. So this dragon taking right here. This is one line where the dragon goes to 8-4. So, yeah, I think you're asking, why not just defend like this? Um, that's a good point. Wait, no, I'm sorry. The knight doesn't go backwards. It's not a chess knight. Um, so... And then here, where the dragon's on 8-4. There's still this tactic. Um, so, yeah, I could try bringing the silvers back here. Um... That seems reasonable. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm not tracking completely. But anyway, what got played here prevented their rook from escaping and smashing this up. So instead... Uh, hmm. I wonder about this. So here we have to have dragon 7-4. Is an idea. And I didn't like this during the game. Because my bishop's not good. Their dragon is good. My center is not doing great. Um, yeah, I think I was right not to like that. So I just take here instead. Um, and then they exchange their dragon. And man, I like my dragons. Dragons are awesome. Um, and they did get to build quite an attack using this bishop. 
Oh, right. I'm forgetting. This is protected. They don't have any tactics left here. Uh, so yeah, they kind of... There's not any huge deficit to taking the dragon and taking a knight. Other than I get this awesome, awesome rook. And at this point, they... Their castle is so prone from behind. Um... I mean, yeah, you want every piece you can for to be able to participate in an attack, but uh, this is looking valuable. So, especially because this knight can be used to fork both golds, like, you might need to defend this, maybe? I don't know. It's really hard to defend. Yeah. Yeah, the rooks. My rook drop is way too powerful here because their camp is just set up to allow me to do a rook drop. Like, it's just not a good exchange. And they don't have a good follow up here. So, is there any way I can salvage what they've tried to do here? Um. No, the pawn promotion kind of forces me to drop the bishop and kind of forces the line we ended up in. So yeah, this once they've set on this path, there doesn't seem to be any going back. Uh, during the game I was also considering this, which looked a bit crazy. Um, couldn't quite solve it. No, this is cowardly. So... Yeah, I mean, I collect a pawn, they get my knight. I'm not able to exchange a bishop for a rook here, and I don't have a next move. So, yeah. Um, I don't have any trap to ensnare this dragon, and again, I don't have a fork of any kind. So what I did during the game was reasonable. Sorry if that looks obvious to folks. Um... During the game, it wasn't obvious to me, because this is just not what I normally play. Yeah, so here... I did wonder a little bit. What about this? This looked interesting. I think the trade-off here is uh, one of King's safety. Uh, so... It's not a light trade-off to make. Well, actually... Actually, maybe I'm safe. Um, maybe there's nothing to worry about. Hmm. Yeah, this protects against my attack if I were to... I can't drop a knight here. If I drop a bishop, they fork me, so that's not happening. Um, hmm. I mean, I kind of have to do this. Or otherwise defend this point, but why not with the silver? So, yeah, and then once I can eject the bishop, I'm just clearly better. Um, yes, yeah, so this would have been a fine way to play if I brought the silver up this way instead of subjecting it to a pin. This could have been fine. There's just nowhere they can attack here. Um, hmm. Yeah, I can't find a move for them. It's that bad. Not saying I'm perfect at move finding or anything. Oh, well, they have a trick here. They do have one thing they could do. They could do this. Um... And sure, I can once answer that this... Well, 
Yeah. I can once answer it this way, but then I can do it again. And this pawn is still loose. This begs the question of how to respond. Um, so if I respond like this, then they're able to get my dragon. But I don't... Surely there's not a better response here, right? Um, well, the bishop taking here doesn't change anything. It forces more exchanges to happen, but... Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. King moves. Yeah, where's my mate? I don't have a mate here. That's unfortunate. I can't force the king to move well. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't have any tricks here. Uh. Oh, right. So if I do this exchange, um, if they force me to make this exchange, I do get a knight out of it. Yes. Yeah, and that knight has some value. I still have two bishops. I have two knights. Uh, yeah, this is good. Just because I don't have the rook doesn't mean this is over for me. Far from it. I really like my rooks. And I was really scared about this thing, but uh, it's nothing. There's just not anything to worry about here. My attack lands so, so much faster if they try to open this up. Um, yeah, these the only pieces ha that is hanging is this um, lance. And that doesn't have to hang either, because I frequently have bishop 5-5 five five forking the entire board. So they can't really push here. So, yeah, it's very difficult even for a rook to attack in this position. And since a rook's all they've got, um, yeah, this is fine for me. I like my rooks. I like my dragon. But here, yeah, this we've consolidated this position. The rook can't break it. Um, yeah, so... Um, but just to say that if they do this bishop drop, yeah, sure, first I should offer the exchange so that next I can collect the knight one tempo faster, even if I don't have any intention of actually, um, like here, this would just be um, collecting multiple pieces for a rook. Uh, so even if I want my bishop on this diagonal, um, yeah, even if it's not really my purpose to collect the knight, um, even if I would prefer to keep my dragon, you know, I can console myself that this is just fine. There's no problem for me because I get a knight. And plus, this is just such a great position. Plus, the rook for them doesn't do anywhere near as much now as it used to do earlier. So, yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, I think I'm out of points. So yeah, their attack ran out, and somehow I managed to checkmate them. Um, oh yeah, actually at this point, yeah, they have to play the desperate sequence, and uh, this sequence runs out. There's nothing left. So, uh, what's the moral of the story? Um... I guess make sure to castle your king, because uh, it can cost a lot if you forget to castle. So, um, And this is a point that was made on Shogi Harbor's live stream, that be extremely careful about pushing your king's pawn. So 
yeah, this just happened on uh, the last Shogi Harbor game analysis, which normally happens Sunday. But yeah, the, she pointed out, please um, be very careful about making moves like this while your king's still there. So this, to me, was waving a red flag, and I took up the challenge, and uh, yeah, the game ended in my favor. So I did something right. Hope we enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.